Welcome to the third module of the MELDA project, where we will be talking about digital content creation. This module aims to inform and provide secondary school teachers with a range of techniques that will help them produce compelling audiovisual and text-based content to enrich their lectures and improve student experience. It will also help them enhance their web content skills and social media awareness. In this topic, we will familiarize secondary school teachers and students with a range of audio and video recording techniques and teach them how to create audiovisual content using their own digital devices or other tools, not only to help them with formal education, but for their own personal use as well. The main purpose is to teach teachers about digital content creation and how they can use a variety of content creation on social media platforms. Audiovisual content creation is the first of three presentations in the digital content creation module, followed by cloud content creation and short form content creation for social media. In the content of audiovisual content creation, we will look to develop an understanding of the use of audiovisual content to develop an analytical skill pack on audio and video content creation, to develop knowledge of different digital tools, and we will enhance our presentation skills with the application of audiovisual content. There are a few styles of learning. Visual learners learn through seeing. Auditory learners learn through hearing. Both these types of learning are quite common, so it's plain to see why audiovisual material can be extremely valuable in the classroom. So, what is audiovisual content in the context of teaching exactly? Also known as audiovisual aid, audiovisual content is supporting teaching material. The transformation of words into visual and audio content is called content creation or production. James S. Kinder said that audiovisual aids are any device which can be used to make the learning experience more concrete, more realistic, and more dynamic. This topic will touch on digital audio and visual content creation. Digital audio and visual content is produced with the help of digital tool devices such as mobile phones, tablets, etc computer software such as Microsoft PowerPoint or cloud-based software such as Powtoon and YouTube. Audiovisual content can help a lot in class. Since there are a lot of people in a classroom, a teacher's job is, a lot of the time, trying to cater to as many learning styles as possible at the same time. Audiovisual learning creates a stimulating and interactive environment which is more conducive to learning. Audiovisual material has been used in schools for years, but mainly in the form of short educational videos. Living in the audiovisual era makes it essential for, for everyone, especially young people, to have the skills and the right mindset to create audiovisual stories and use audiovisual equipment. People, students included, learn in different ways. Audiovisual equipment and material can give teachers the opportunity to stimulate each student's learning process. Audiovisual content combines different mediums into one, catering to more than one learning style at the same time. This allows more students to absorb the content more quickly and more easily. Whether this is in the form of video, picture, audio or text, the student will be able to understand information technology learn with the use of technology and think critically in terms of technology. So let's see how to create some content, shall we? Let's start with audio content. The easiest way to make engaging and creative audio content to share with your students is by using your phone's standard recording application. Some examples of audio content for class are interview session, perhaps with a scholar, or an expert outside school hours. Could be music and songs if you are, let's say, a music teacher or if your students create music in the context of your lesson. You can also record lectures or tips for assignments. The first step to make your audio content is to go to your phone's app menu and find the application. 
Usually, the voice recording app can be found in a default folder of apps included by the manufacturer. So the folder would be named something like Huawei apps or Samsung apps as demonstrated in step two. In this case, we're using a Samsung device to demonstrate the basics which can be applied to most other Android devices. If you have trouble finding the app, you can search for it in your app menu using keywords such as voice, record, recording, recorder, etc. Step three demonstrates what the app should look like once you open it. In this case, there are options at the top to choose the purpose of your recording. This might not be the case for all phones, however. Whether these options are there or not, the next step is probably clear. Just press the big red button. In step four, we see the sound being recorded with a timer at the top showing how long has passed after we started recording. We can pause the recording using the middle button with the two vertical lines and continue the recording later, or we can press the stop button on the right hand side, which automatically prompts the same screen. Once we press stop, we will be prompted to name our recording as seen in step five. We've chosen to name this recording, My Song, and we can see it in the voice recording app, as seen in step seven. Now we can share our recording by tapping the share button. As demonstrated in step eight, there are various ways in which we can share our recording directly at the present button. Let's move on to video content. You probably don't remember, but you used to have to carry a video camera around with you if you wanted to make videos. Nowadays, things are a lot simpler, thankfully. Your phone can come in handy when you want to record things to show in class. A few examples of video you can record yourself include a video tour of a place of cultural heritage if you're a history teacher, for example, a debate or a conversation with a colleague on a relevant subject, a new segment to emphasize something important. So let's start with the basics. Look for the camera app on your phone and tap on it. Once your camera is activated, you will see where it's aiming at. Switch the function to video. In this case, you need to slide the option seen at the bottom in step 10. Press record. Once you've captured the desired video, press stop. And as then seen in step 12, you have the options from left to right to edit, share or delete your video. If you want to edit the video, you have a few different options right on your mobile device. As you can see in step 13, you can cut, add filters or effects, stickers and even music. Step 14 demonstrates how you can add music to your video. You have the option to keep the original sound of the video along with the music and you can also adjust the volume of each track separately. Alternatively, you can opt to mute the video's original sound entirely and just keep the music. In step 15, we can see the snipping option where you can cut out parts of the video that you didn't like or that you think your students won't find useful. It's great that these simple editing options are integrated directly into your smartphone. It goes to show that you don't really need fancy equipment or additional financial investment to be able to create great content. Most of us already have the tool and we probably know how to record a video or a sound clip. What we do need is a creative push to help us put our tools and skills to good use. Let's move on to something a bit more advanced. Powtoon is a cloud-based software that gives you the opportunity to create animated presentations and animated explainer videos. You can visit their website at www.powtoon.com. Before you can get started creating your video, you need to create a Powtoon account. To make things even simpler for you, Powtoon offers a variety of ways to create an account or login, such as Facebook and Gmail. The choice is up to you. There's paid plans, but there's also a free version you can use, which still offers a variety of features. Now that you've successfully logged in, you need to decide what type of video you will be creating. There are a few templates you can choose from, which can help you and also provide some inspiration. 
These are most helpful if they look quite similar to what you have in mind for your final product. Some templates are for paid accounts only. These are marked with the word PRO at the lower side corner of the thumbnail. Alternatively, you can start with a blank Powtoon and create your own design. We decided to go with the blank design for this presentation. Once you choose the blank design, you are prompted to select a look for your Powtoon. For this presentation, we opted to go with the modern edge look as shown on the top right. On the left hand side, you have the slide selector, which resembles what you would see in Microsoft PowerPoint or Google Slides. Powtoon is a little bit different here because each slide is essentially a scene of the video you're creating. At the bottom, you have the timeline. This bar has the overall duration of each scene or slide, each of which can be a maximum of 20 seconds long. The timeline also allows you to see and move along it each element of the video to make it appear earlier or later in the scene as you choose. On the far right, you can see a grey toolbar with all the different tabs such as background, characters and scenes, which is at the moment selected. Since the selected tool tab is Scenes, we are now looking at, you guessed it, the different scene templates where you have options like intros, situations and image grids. Alternatively, you can skip, skip these templates as well and design everything from scratch. There are loads of free images to choose from under the Backgrounds tab, or you can upload your own. The Text tab on the far right gives you a few options to introduce text to your videos, such as titles, subtitles, body of text, or even speech bubbles. The Characters and the Props tabs offer a number of designs to choose from, some of which are animated. You can also add shapes, images, videos, sounds, and special effects. Once you have completed your video, click Preview and Export at the top right. Your video is now saved under My Powtoons. You will get this notification once you complete your video. You can access your video in the My Powtoon section and make changes or share your video through different media. Once you have your video, you can attach it to a PowerPoint presentation. Let's start by creating the star of your presentation. Add a title and a subtitle. And add a new slide to your presentation. This is where the video will go. On the ribbon at the top, Go to the Insert tab and click the Video section at the very end. You are given the option to add an online video or video from your PC. If you have a Pro Powtoon account, you can download the video on your computer and then add it to this live presentation. Click the option Video on my PC. Locate the video file you want to use in your system and click Insert. Alternatively, you can embed the video's link to your slide. You're now all set to deliver great content to your students. So, to sum up, this presentation gave us insights into the importance of using audio and video materials in education. We, we touched upon matters of audiovisual content use in classrooms and how audiovisual content and equipment can help students to absorb content more quickly. Teachers can create content, either video or audio, using their own mobile phones or other digital tools available online, such as Powtoon. The material produced can reflect the needs of education, since many students nowadays are more attracted to visual and audio content that is available online and tend to learn faster when exposed to audiovisual content. It is therefore important for teachers to learn new ways to enhance their teaching methods by creating or using more audiovisual content in the classroom. So, thank you for watching. We hope you found this video informative. To learn more about the project, please visit our website at www.meldaproject.eu. You can find this material in presentation format 
on the project's e-platform. Thank you for watching.